Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be providing the answers to questions three and four to the 2024 Wire Chemistry Theory. If you are yet to watch the solutions to questions one and two, check the links in the description. Also, if you are prepared to write any O-level chemistry examination, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to always stay updated with our new uploads. So join us and let's write. So that gives us what? Let's write out the word equation first. That's propanol plus butanoic acid. Remember, it's a reversible reaction. The presence of an acid to give us what? Propyl butanoate plus water. So this is C3 H7OH plus C3 h 7 cooh reversible reactions. You can write dilute H2SO4 based on the question given. So this will be C3 H7 COO C3 H7 plus what? H2O. Please note that these alkyl groups are not always the same. This and this, they are not always the same. It's just coincidental. Are we together? It's not every time that they will be the same, right? They just take note of that. All right, that is the end of question three. So we move on to question four. Question four says, write a balanced chemical equation for each of the following reactions. Ammonia gas with copper, two oxide. This question is for nitrogen and its compounds. So ammonia gas as NH3, gas plus copper 2 oxide. This is used in the laboratory preparation of nitrogen gas. Giving us what? This will give us nitrogen gas plus copper solid plus H2O liquid. Is it balanced? No. So we add two here. I us two nitrogen, two nitrogen. Hydrogen is now six. So you add three here to balance hydrogen. Oxygen is now three here. You add three here as CuO. Now you add three copper here. Good. So that's balance. Okay. So move on to the next question. The next equation says ammonia gas with oxygen gas. Ammonia. plus oxygen gas to give us what? NO gas plus what? H2O. This is used in the catalytic oxidation of ammonia to produce trisonitrophic acid. That's the Oswald's process, right? So is it balanced? Let's see. We have equations like this. Always try to balance the element that's standing alone last. So here, if we add two here to balance hydrogen first, so let's just write two by the side here. So hydrogen will be six, nitrogen will be two. So we add two here, right? While we make hydrogen three here, right? Nitrogen and hydrogen seem to be balanced, but oxygen is not balanced. Oxygen here is what, three? And here is five. So what do we do? How can we make this five? Make this what? Five, that's 2.5. That's five over two, good. So since we must balance with whole number coefficients, we're going to multiply two by what? Two, right? Good. So this will give us what? Four, this will be what? Four, this will be what? Six, and this will be five. And our equation is beautifully balanced. All right, please, like I always advise you, if you are not sure of the state symbols, please don't add them, All right? Okay, the next one is potassium iodide with chlorine gas. Potassium iodide with chlorine gas, this is a displacement reaction of halogens. Aqueous potassium iodide, aqueous. So since they have told you here is aqueous, I think you need to add the state symbols here. So potassium iodide, Ki, Aqueous. Remember, potassium is K plus. Iodine is also what? I minus. They have valencies of one, but different charges, so they exchange. Then plus chlorine gas. Cl2 gas. 
giving us what? So chlorine will displace iridine, which will now be KCl, aqueous plus iridine. Most times the iodine that is displaced becomes what? Aqueous too, right? In a way. So the solution turns what? Brown in color, right? So this is um, two and two, right? Since halogens are diatomic molecules, right? Good. Next. Okay, ion with dilute tetrahydrosulfate six RC. Okay, that's ion Fe solid plus H two SO four aqueous. This is um, a form of displacement reaction between ion and hydrogen. So this will give us what Fe SO four aqueous plus hydrogen gas a very straightforward reaction everything's already balanced so keep marks there for you how do we get h2so4 tetrahydro sulfate 6 this is so4 2 minus since that acid means that's hydrogen what ion so they exchange their radicals that's h2 and so4 so this gives us ion 2 tetraoxo sulfate for ion 2 fe2 plus and SO4 2 minus. So they give us Fe2 and SO4 2. So these two cancel out to give us Fe SO4. Good. Then the last one is Aqueous. Aqueous. If you <laughs> if tool is Aqueous, so you need to add the state symbol. Like 2 trouser nitrate 5 with hydrogen chloride gas. So, like 2 trouser nitrate 5, like 2 PB2 plus trouser nitrate 5 NO3 minus. So, by the time you exchange, that would be PB NO3 to NO3 minus is a radical, right? So, this will be PB NO3 to aqueous plus hydrogen chloride gas hydrogen chloride hydrogen h plus and cl minus so they exchange their radicals one one that gives me h1 cl1 that's hcl good so plus hcl gas what will happen here this will be pb it's kind of a form of double decomposition because this guy when it gets into the solution it will dissolve to form hydrochloric acid so this precipitate will be formed pbcl2 solid plus hno3 aqueous plus aqueous hno3 is it balance chlorine one here chlorine two transmitted five here two here one okay so we need to balance chlorine and transmitted five so we add two here I also add two here and boom we are good to go so next for the last question question 4c you have to state the class of oxides to which each of the following compounds belong what are oxides oxides are simply compounds of oxygen that contain the oxide ion that's o2 minus compounds of binary compounds of oxygen that contain the oxide ion right and there are two major types you have metallic oxide and the non-metallic oxides. And under metallic oxides, you have the basic oxide and you have the amphoteric oxide. While under non-metallic, you have the acidic oxide and you have the neutral oxides. Now, the basic oxides are basically all metallic oxides. Whenever a metal combines with oxygen to form an oxide, it will always be a basic oxide, even though it may also be amphoteric. But all metallic oxides are basic oxides. But it is not all amphoteric oxides. Sorry, it is not all basic oxides that are amphoteric oxides. And basic oxides react with acids to form salts and water, if possible. While amphoteric oxides react with both acid and alkalis 
right to form salt and water then acidic oxides they are oxides of non-metals that show acidic water properties right they react with bases or alkalis to form what salt and water right while neutral oxides just from the name they do not have any effect on litmus paper right they do not react with acids nor react with what bases are we together all right so let's look at this now let's state the class of oxides to which each of the following compounds belong sodium oxide is sodium oxide a metallic oxide or a non-metallic oxide sodium is it a metal or a non-metal of course it's a metal and being a metal it means that it is what a basic word of the basic oxide because it is not an amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxides are based on your yx syllabus so you have zinc oxide you have aluminium oxide you have lead two oxide you have tin oxide you can also have beryllium oxide yeah some will add lead four oxide and sno some but i'm not always too comfortable with that though so this is what a basic oxide so basic oxide because you react with an acid you can react with an acid like na2o plus let's say hcl to form what nacl plus water water right so this gives us two here and then two here fine now zinc oxide of course zinc oxide is an atmospheric word oxide you can react with both acids and alkalis to form what salt so this is amphoteric it has a dual nature amphoteric oxide and that dual nature can be seen here giving us what ZnCl2 plus H2O or it can react with sodium hydroxide and water to form what a complex compound Na2 ZnOH4 right then sulfur for oxide so for that is a non-metallic word oxide the sulfur is a, a non-metal right and being a non-metallic oxide what type of oxide is it is it an acidic oxide or a neutral oxide it is an acidic oxide because this guy will dissolve in water to form an acid right so this is an acidic oxide because it can dissolve in water to form H2SO3, that is trousosulfate for acid. Or it can react with an alkali, sodium hydroxide, to form what? A base, sorry, salt, that is Na2SO3 plus what? H2O. So that two there. Is it balanced? It should be balanced. Yes, it's balanced. Right? Okay, the next ones the last two carbon four oxide carbon four oxide just like sulfur four oxide is also an acidic word oxide right acidic oxide they share similar properties co2 plus h2o will give us what a weak acid this is a weak acid too h2co3 that's trouser carbon in four acid. And this CO2 can also react with, let's say, KOH to give us what? K2CO3 plus H2O, right? So this will be what? Two. Fine. Everybody's fine. And the last one is what? N2O. This is dinitrogen one oxide. So I'm calling it dinitrogen one oxide. Why would I call it just nitrogen one? That a nitrogen one oxide is a neutral oxide, is a neutral oxide because it does not react with an acid, it does not react with acids nor bases or alkalis 
to form a salt and it has no effect on the litmus. All these other ones, these acidic oxides will have effect on damp litmus paper. They will turn damp blue litmus paper red. While the soluble basic oxides will turn red litmus paper blue, right? So that brings us to the end of our correction to questions three and four of the 2024 wax chemistry theory. I know that you were able to learn anything from this tutorial. Kindly hit the like button. Hit it now, yes. Subscribe to this channel if you are still yet to do so and turn on your notification bell to stay updated because our next video would be solution to question five, which is on extraction of aluminum, right? So if you need any clarification on any questions we have treated here or anything we have said here, please drop it in the comments and be sure that we will attend to it. So until we come your way next time, I remain the science chef. Thank you and God bless.